welcome to this week's episode, guys. So this week, I've decided to do a bit of a comparison between an inflatable paddleboard and a hard paddleboard. Um, what are some of the pros and cons between the two? Um, I now have one of each on board. The hard one we were lucky enough to be given from a friend of ours. We're looking after it while they are selling their boat. And thank you, Marcus, for my inflatable pink one. I'm super thankful. Hi, we are Erica and Davey, an adventurous, slightly crazy couple who has taken on the challenge that is a hurricane damaged catamaran. We have come so far and are beyond happy to be floating once more. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. Take a chance. You never know how perfect something may turn out to be. So I put together a list of five different categories that I'm going to judge each of these paddle boards on. Um, we were lucky enough, our friends have let us borrow their hard paddle board um, while they're trying to sell their boat. And then thank you Marcus who has sent me an inflatable paddle board and it's pink. So super thankful for that. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of a comparison, five different categories. Um, so transportation, how easy it is to move them, price point kind of different pricings on what type of paddle boards you can get, the stability of both of them, um, ease of use and maintenance, and then steering and maneuverability while you're on the paddle board itself. So I'm gonna go through some of these and I'll let you know which one I prefer at the end. So to start off, um, ease of transportation. So the hard paddle board obviously has to be kept outside on the boat. Um, as it is hard and it can't be folded down. So Davey's gonna be my little assistant. I'll be a cameraman. So we keep the hard one here at the moment. The one dis disadvantage to this is it has to stay out in the sun. So it does get a bit of sun damage on it from staying outside. Whereas the inflatable one, you can actually keep it inside so it stays out of the sun. But I do notice on other, other boats, some yeah. people do make covers for them. Other right? boats, people do make covers for them, which is very handy. Um, but anyways, it's not that difficult to get in the water. We use bungee cords to keep it on. All right, guys, while Eric is doing that, um, I'm actually thinking about making a little sort of uh, hook system that goes on the outside of the railings um, just to store them better. Um, but that's another project in the pipelines. So the, this hard one here, it is foam cord and it has a little bit of a plastic covering on it. Um, I don't think it is actual proper epoxy. And this is a Canadian tire uh, paddleboard, as our friends are Canadian as well. But it is a little bit heavier, I do have to say. So for ease of transportation for the hard one, it is a little bit more difficult, more challenging. But at the end of the day, it's not too bad because it can just be on the side of the boat. Alright, so ease of transportation. <laughs> I can get it. So I definitely find this one easier to transport. It's a little bit lighter. And there you go. You can actually see the three uh, fins as well. And that makes the stability, or the, sorry, the steering quite easy. I do love the funky uh, coloring and it's pink. Love it. So we got this fancy dancy little electric pump. Um, super easy. Makes the process of deflating and inflating super easy. So this goes into transportation. Obviously if you want to take it to the beach or take it to different places, being able to inflate it and deflate it is huge. Um, there we go. about transportation or easily transportable the inflatable paddleboard is on my back so it comes with a little backpack and it's not very heavy so I could easily take this to the beach or take it elsewhere and pump it up and be able to use it so it is kind of fantastic so for stability wise obviously as a hardboard it doesn't flex at all because it's just one solid piece 
Um, so stability wise it is pretty solid. It is a pretty good option. Um, this one is a little bit narrower. Um, so you do want to look at the different uh, widths that you can get them in. This one being a little bit narrower, the stability is a little bit wobbly. Um, so you want to keep a slight bend in your knees and be a little bit confident when you're using this one. So as for stability on the inflatable, this one being quite beamy, quite wide, she does have good stability. So I only inflated it to 10 PSI because I did it in the morning. So with the heat of the sun, I didn't want her to get too expanded throughout the course of the day. For me, it was perfect and I find it quite, uh, quite stable. However, if you are a slightly taller person um, or a slight bigger person, you might want to fill it to its maximum capacity of air being 15 PSI, um, just because then it will give you that more stability. I kind of like both the paddle boards for different reasons. The hard one, it's a bit more stable. The soft one, because it's easier to transport and it's easier to keep it safe um, out of the sun when it's on the boat. But I have two people here who have never paddleboard before, so I'm gonna let them both try and see which ones they prefer. See if they can even do it. You've guessed it, it's gonna be Davey and Andy. So it could be a bit of fun to see if they can even stand up on it. <laughs> so Davey's gonna be pretty in pink. I wasn't expecting swim today. You're not gonna swim, you're gonna paddleboard. <laughs> uh, you haven't got my balance. All right, so the pink one is the inflatable one and the blue one is the hard one. So Davey, yeah. when you get on, try and get on in the middle, okay? Yes, boss. You've seen me do it, so. Up this way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just getting the sand off. So they're both dive instructors, so they should both be able to swim. Oh, he's up! And he's away! Oh, he's got that before! So if you paddle on the right, you're gonna go left. If you paddle on the left, you're gonna go right. I'm trying to turn around! Then paddle backwards on the right. There you go. But the water's really deep. Go, babe! <laughs> Please get bubbly. Oh, this is bubbly. This is no good for me. You're only in six inches of water. Where are your sunnies, babe? Oh, I left them on the beach. Where's your oh. sunnies, Andy? On my head. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, babe, now fall in. No. Don't do this draw. You might get awake and thin. beginner paddle boarders um, which I paddle think we're board, experts which paddle board do you think was more stable uh, first? for me the solid one because the one that you pump up 
didn't seem to have enough air in it so it was lighter and it was bending so it was harder to use your core with your legs for me my legs had to be further apart oh, you got high center of gravity high center of gravity yeah. so therefore when i was moving of course the board was also moving because there's not enough air in it so the solid yeah. one for me definitely uh, me personally i'm actually going to go the opposite way i'm going to go for the inflatable it seems to be wider and more stable i probably weigh a couple of pounds less than you maybe could be that um, but i did also find that with the hard one it was the, the blown up one hard not hard one sorry the, the inflatable uh, wait a minute I'll go back to So I did also find that with, not with the inflatable, but with the hard board, it was easier to turn it to steer it. Yeah. Um, but to stand up on, I personally think the inflatable one. So, but anyway, what do we know? <laughs> That's the first time I've ever I tried. Think, yeah. And I didn't fall off the inflatable one. Yeah. I fell off, well, it might have had something to do with you, but. Oh, so, something a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Cool, thanks guys. Because I wouldn't use it enough. Yeah. For me, my own personal, I'd rather put an engine on the back of it than just. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, they would be good for drift fishing. If you can drift down the side yeah, of the mangroves yeah. with that, then once you can do that in a dinghy, they'll pull you out. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. So ease of use and maintenance on the hard one. Obviously, there isn't that much maintenance because it is just a hard board. You don't have to reinflate it. Um, the one fact of maintenance would be maybe putting an extra coat of epoxy on it because some of the plastic is peeling off. But besides that, hard boards are pretty easy. It's minimal maintenance and you just put them in the water and go. Ease of use and maintenance on the inflatable. There is a little bit more maintenance. Obviously, if you are going to keep it deflated, you then have to inflate it before you use it. Um, but if you are going to leave it inflated, I highly recommend getting a cover to put over it so the sun doesn't damage the PVC. If you leave it out, especially in the Caribbean, the PVC will start to deteriorate um, maybe a year or two, three years maximum. Um, so if you want to make it last as long as possible, a cover is good. Also, when you blow up a inflatable paddleboard, most of them are about 12 to 15 PSI. Um, we have a fancy electric pump which makes it super easy um, and you can just set it to that. If you are going to leave it inflated, you want to make sure that it is at 15 PSI in the heat of the day. If you inflate it to 15 PSI in the morning when it's cool, if you leave it out in the sun, it will expand and it could potentially pop. So you want to make sure that it's 15 PSI at the heat, highest point of the day. So steering and maneuverability wise on the hard paddleboard, it is, it is a little bit easier to steer because it has more weight behind it. Um, whereas the inflatable one, if it's a bit windy, you can get caught in the breeze. Um, so steering wise, it's a little bit more accurate on the hard one. So steering and maneuverability on the inflatable board, it's a little bit different depending on the wind. So if the wind picks up and you're trying to go into the wind, it's obviously going to be a little bit more difficult. However, I do have to say this paddleboard that I have, it has three fins on the bottom, which makes the steering amazing. Like it makes it really quite convenient. Um, whereas the hard board only has one fin on the bottom. I know you can get different boards that obviously have three on the hard ones or just one. Um, but the three on the inflatable is definitely helpful. So as for price point guys on a hard paddleboard it completely varies in price um, so this one actually was a Canadian tire it was probably one of the cheaper ones on the end of the spectrum um, it was only about six hundred dollars um, whereas some of the really good hard boards that you can purchase can be upwards of seventeen hundred dollars so you're really looking at a big investment when you're looking at the hard boards um, because of the different products that they are made with some of them are made with wood as well, and they're like bamboo and really cool. Um, maybe one day I'll get one of those, but for now, I'm happy with this guy. So price point on the inflatables, obviously with everything, you can get lower end to higher end, whether it be the inflatable or the hard. However, these days, the inflatable ones have gone down a lot in price. So for instance, this one on Amazon was $236. Um, you can spend up to seven, eight hundred bucks, I believe, on an inflatable. Um, but this one is a fantastic quality. It has nice foam to stand on, um, and it was only two hundred and thirty-six dollars. So the price has definitely come down on these. The hard ones are definitely a little bit more expensive. One of the other things about living on a sailboat and having a paddleboard, 
I really like the fact of the inflatable one because hypothetically if you're sailing in big winds, big seas, um, you have less windage on the boat. With the hard one, it's kind of like it has to stay outside. Whereas the inflatable one can go inside. Same as if you're going to be in a storm or a hurricane or any of that kind of stuff. You want to pack everything inside as much as possible so it doesn't blow away. Um, so that being the inflatable, it's easier to store inside. So it definitely comes down to personal preference a little bit, but for living on a sailboat, I think my preference is definitely the inflatable paddleboard. It's just much easier when you live on a sailboat. So you're giving a short, brief instructions first? Nah, no, just go for it. Just go for it. <laughs> you used to be an instructor for paddleboarding. Just hop on and don't fall off. Yeah. <laughs> and of course now the wind's picked up too, right? Yeah. But oh my God, it's wobbly, isn't it? It's a paddleboard. <laughs> I'm going to untie your rope. Oh, great. Uh, Foxy, no, you're not going. No, not with Sonia. Not with Sonia. No, you'll be swimming with me. <laughs> All right, so it is a bit of a pain in the ass for both because they're big. <laughs> but this one has more weight. All right, so uh, what was my three points? You say, Sonia? You're, <laughs> You're going into the wind. The way home will be easier. on where I put this in the edit, but uh, stability. Um, okay, stop. On Breathe. Am I talking too fast? You're going a little bit far. Maybe we should be rolling. Why? <laughs> All right. So you're too far away. I'm too so far. So we going to straighten up because of the uh, I'm just going to hold I think you can be on it in that angle if I can just slow it down yeah. all right I'll just hold you in a bit more all right all right that works all right, crack on. All right. 